Everything's for you here, bitch. <laughs> Everything's for you. <laughs> and then you'll find somewhere else and they'll be like, we have nothing for you here. <laughs> nothing for you. Sounds like my dating life. Yeah. <laughs> let's sit on the couch. Let's talk it out. Come on, join the show. I'll tell you what I know. Oh, talk about it. It's the best podcast. Let's have a blast. You all know I love music. My tagline is speak your mind and sing it loud. And today we're continuing that narrative right here on the show for The Healing Couch for season three of Archie the Podcast. And I really love what I do because I'm able to um, enter people's lives through having conversations and sparking an emotion and through technology, essentially. And today's guest did that for me in song. We'll talk about that in more. But Grammy-nominated genre-fluid singer-songwriter musician and actress Yola. Hey! Welcome. Hey. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Hey, this by is a way, vibe already. I already love you. This is already vibes. This yes, is profoundly painless. I love it so much. So I, I have so much to get into it with Let's you go. because you are doing all the things for me. You know, I got into music at a young age. You know, my parents would blast music throughout the house, and it helped you know fuel my creative dreams. And it was a consistent friend. So, when did you lean into music? Uh, the birth canal. Mm -hmm. um, oh. <laughs> yes. yes Like yeah. Like I didn't have a choice yeah. um, So it transpires uh, I found out later that I was of the Gar tribe And apparently if you're of the Gar tribe of Ghana You have no choice oh. You have like some millennia Many, several millennia worth yeah. Of the arts In your bloodstream And you're never going to escape it <laughs> So just find your nearest Ghana and go She's gone and be like Ah <laughs> Musician, right? <laughs> it's like the most profoundly predictable thing. Really? And then my mother was from, so that was my father's side, but my mum mm. was from Barbados mm. and she was, she DJ disco. Oh, and wow. so apparently even when I was like, you know, in the womb, <laughs> like I was getting disco. And yes. for that reason, I'm now, I'm, I always will be an obsessive of James Gadson, the drummer, yeah. and that feel and pocket style and... You'll feel that, like, on my second record, you'll feel that on my music going forward mm -hmm. more and more and more mm -hmm. and more. Do you remember the first album you bought? Album? Oh, my God. So I was, like, really poor, and I only had, like, wood and a chisel. Huh. For real. Really? That poor. Okay. You had nothing. All right. So, so eventually... when I first had money, mm -hmm. I think would have been... God, was it as late as... It wouldn't have been as late as it would have been something like salt and pepper, or maybe it <sighs> that would have been a retrospective buy if that was, and that would have been later. Maybe velvet rope, even okay. Oh, that's good. Maybe even that. Like, I bought some real crap singles when I was a kid, okay, because I wasn't allowed to buy, I wanted to buy salt and pepper, yeah, <laughs> but it wasn't I, allowed, I, it wasn't allowed because it was sexy and I was five, so. <laughs> Well, now Yola. <laughs> you know? And yes. so that was like, you can't be pushing what? I mean, Shut I get up. it. I get it. At six years old, Tony Braxton had me ready to leave my husband on the school bus yeah, at seven. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> what are you thinking? It was like, yeah, this is yes. great. So how, how, but you still relate in some weird <laughs> child way. Wait. I don't know how I relate. I don't know what I thought I knew. Right. But yeah. Okay. And so like, I really got like, I had some really sketchy singles choices, but album wise, I feel like it would have it would have been somewhere around around Velvet Rope ish okay. kind of time. Well, for many outlets, you've been dubbed the Queen of Country Soul, is what some are saying. How do you receive that? Well, do you know what? I think to start with, I was like, oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, wait a minute. I'm more my first single. And I'm like, what was the first single on my first record? And they're like, Oh yeah, far away look. And I'm like, is it country? And they're like, no. <laughs> is it soul? And they're like, no. I'm like, what is it? And they're like, maybe a bit more wall of sound, classic pop, uh. if anything. I'm like, so then how can I put one, my, the only song you have from me? <laughs> and it doesn't even fit within the thing yeah. that you're calling me. And they're yeah. like, oh God, that is inconvenient, isn't it? I'm like, yeah, it's really inconvenient. And so the story goes on yeah. where I'm like, actually, do you know what? I'm choosing to name and define myself. Yeah. 
because self-determining is another demonstration of freedom, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm genre fluid. I will come into your house, be it soul music, be it rock and roll music, be it country, be it jazz, be it funk, be it whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll sit down and make myself a cup of tea. I'll eat your biscuits and I'll leave. Biscuits yeah. in the English way as opposed to the American way. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, yes. <laughs> but cookies in the American cookies. way. Cookies. I love a good cookie. <laughs> but very much so. I'm like, this is all mine. I'm not I'm not just... Yeah, you're doing it all. I'm not just doing this little thing and then you stay there. I think that that's... sounds like no fun. So, you know, brilliant though. Because for, for, you're the only artist that I've heard use and like kind of coin and uplift this phrase, which is so amazing and magnifying, especially in today's day and age. Like we have a lot of gender fluid, right? And yes. so, so it makes so much sense. Why can't we just create, right? Yeah. yeah. Why can't we just create? Like yeah. for me, um, uh, the first thought I have is I listen to lots of different kinds of music. Yeah. As fans, we listen to lots of different kinds of music. Yeah. So imagine taking a musician who's probably like a super fan of music mm -hmm. by definition mm -hmm. and saying, you can only do one, knock yourself out, <laughs> enjoy that. So limiting. That doesn't sound like any kind of fun. No. And so my my mission is to find the connective tissue yeah. between genre. So never really being too far down the dusty end of any one. Ooh, that's good. But to be like finding how all of this stuff speaks to each other. Yeah. And if you can, then you can uproot the colonizing of genre. Mm. Because if you can find its common root, you can understand the etymology of it, then you can understand the ownership of it. And where it resides, aka Black America. Yeah, there's history in there. Is what that you're really no, is. There's, it's there's, important. There's soul to, ties. Oh yes, there is. Yeah. You know, and I think like the role I played in the movie yeah. ties in with my general mission. Elvis. The promo I did for it, and the way that I didn't let anyone get five minutes without <laughs> understanding <laughs> that Sister Rosetta Tharp invented rock and roll. Yeah, all of these missions tie together with the uh, idea of understanding the etymology of music yeah. and like, and that it's black. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it's you so know? black. Yeah. Talk about that though. Since you brought it up, how did this film come to play? How did, how did you get introduced to this film and, you know, do such a great portrayal that you did? So here's the crazy thing. I used to work for a sample replay company. There aren't many of those in the world. Okay. There's like a handful on earth. Okay. okay? Yes, I so don't they're know. They're very, very rare entities. Mm. And your job is Snoop Dogg wants a sample yeah. cleared. Ah. Right? He wants to use it on a song. As for example, it can yeah. be anybody, yeah, yeah, but let's yeah. use Snoop. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> shout out to Snoop. <laughs> shout out to Snoop. I think we might have done something for Snoop. And that's why it came okay, to my mind. Okay, okay, yes. And, <laughs> and, you're like, okay, the record company owns this sample for a million freaking years. Mm -hmm. It's not going to the family. It's not going to anybody else. It's just going to the record company. And they want 70% of your, like, <laughs> or 50% or whatever it is right. of the mechanical. Now, the intellectual property still resides where it does if you sing it directly, but you will then replay. You'll essentially recreate the master mm -hmm. with a one noticeable difference. So they know it's not their master got it but then they can still use it it still has the energy it still has the thing that impetus that inspired hmm. anyway so i used to do that for many many years oh. over a decade oh wow like, <laughs> that's a long time that's a long ass time oh well over a decade and so i had this job where I would have to get into the headspace because you've got to capture the performance. Mm -hmm. You've got to capture the thing that when they listen to it, made them want to sample it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that is the energy or it's where the person was in their life. And so this ties you to the movie? So I did this job for so long. And then when I when I was like doing a session with the producer, of the soundtrack. Okay. Um, and he was like, "You, s how are you like blending? Like you you can throw in so many different directions. Mm. And I'm like, I used to do this job. Mm -hmm. And he goes, there's another job coming. Do you know what? Like when it, if it comes through, I'll yeah, send yeah. you a message. Anyway, it comes through and he's like, I'm doing this record for like a movie. Mm -hmm. And I think you're the one to do Sister Is That a Tharp. Mm. Because... I've not met anybody that has your kind of out of time voice that mm. I have. Okay. Okay. Um, 
which used to make me a pariah, <laughs> but all of a sudden was eminently useful all of a sudden. Yes. You know? And, and so they, yeah, that, I went into this, I, I'd sent in an audition tape, went in, um, got it, went in to record and Baz was there directing in the actual session. So he was giving you right. the idea of what he's going to need yeah. because he does the music before he shoots even one scene of the film. So it was about where it was about just the life's journey, right? And, and, yeah. and being in so spaces. I got it through doing the soundtrack. Yeah. But only because when he saw me performing to bring it full circle, mm -hmm. he realized that I'd spent years having to act vocals because of this job I did for over 10 years. Interesting. And because I used to have to act vocals, the job was very precisely acting vocals and being there so yep. that's how i got the soundtrack but also i go in deep on research for these replays mm. once we got one sent back because they thought it was their master because we were so accurate it was like the weather girls and i was all three different weather girls and they couldn't tell that i was three different people wow <laughs> shout out to you i mean and so i was like so i go deep when i go deep. give her her oscar now <laughs> <laughs> and i was like and so he was like there's something else going on here. I'm like, yeah, I work for a very rare kind of company. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> or I used to anyway. Yeah. And and so like right there, you could see the cogs going with Baz. He's like, right. I think we found her. I think we found her. And so I got cast pretty much in session. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What makes you feel safe? What makes me feel safe? Yes. Do you know what? Um, boundaries. Boundaries. Respected boundaries. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. People that respect boundaries make me feel safe. Yeah. Not everybody's doing that. People really don't know what consent is. People really don't know what, like, a sense of, like, what a line being crossed is. Mm -hmm. People have no idea. Yeah. And so I think boundaries for me makes me feel safe. People that really understand how those work. <laughs> I ditto. I was a little over a year now, right? I was minding my own business, listening to a, a playlist from one of the, you know, the apps or whatever, I think maybe Spotify. And you came up. Oh. Oh, yes. And so you came up and I was, in my mind, I'm like, you know, sometimes you're just doing your own thing. You're listening to the things go. And I immediately, my soul was like, what is this? What is happening? Right? And so it was... Dancing Away in Tears. Yeah, That song, like, you know, so that one was really, really pushed on the streamings. And I, I, draw, I drew to that song. I actually shared it with the person I was dating at the time. There and, you go. And so then we bonded over this song of yours, then sending us down the rabbit hole of your catalog and, you know, who you are and your music and things like that. We, the song is very interesting title, Dancing Away in Tears. We yeah. eventually broke up. Of and course so, you did, because so, that's a breakup and song. So then, <laughs> and so then, we have Dancing Away really in tears. And... And then, and, then, and then I look up one day and you follow me on social and I'm like, oh my gosh, I actually have a video to that song on my, on my Instagram, like over a year ago. And so I just want to say you, that's, this is what I was setting the tone for when we opened up the show that you are moving in ways that are just incredible, right? And so I thank you for entering my life. And how here we are now, which is so magical. It's very full circle for me. And now you're doing your thing, the movie and everything, and you're breaking down the history of music. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, how do you keep your ego in check when you're on the rise? You're on the rise. You're getting bigger and bigger, Gola. I'm, I'm a plus size, dark skin, black woman. Mm-hmm. End sentence. <laughs> yeah. White supremacy mm -hmm. will keep my ego in check. Fuck you very much. There you go. Yeah. It, it'll be like, hey. And depending on what city you're in, yeah. you'll feel the supremathon crush your sense of wow. will to live. Or lift it up going, everything's for you here, bitch. <laughs> hey, everything's for you. <laughs> and then you'll find somewhere else and they'll be like, we have nothing for you here. <laughs> nothing for you. Sounds like my dating life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plug um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, just Earth. Yeah. Earth is like, the English invaded over 90% of the planet. And they've done it for me. Yeah. Just by spreading supremacy everywhere. Mm -hmm. Even places where ain't it's no one everywhere. white. 
Oh like, my God. Yes. No, still, even, even places that are not white because yeah, as you were talking white. about the roots. Yeah. Huh? It never ends. So like, I'm just, I'm just trying to survive, motherfucker. I tell you right now. <laughs> and you're doing a damn good job at it. Hey, you know, it's been a journey. I haven't always been like a champion of myself, yeah. you know? And like the first song on um, Stand For Myself is about that. It's about doormat Yola and mm. like how mm-hmm. I just wasn't really, you know, owning myself. Yeah. And so, especially when you grow up in England, like there's a... It's far more psychological in England. So do you have a relationship with therapy being, you know, from England and development? Yes? Yeah, like, like a fuck ton. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, well, I I I noticed, like, how much I am I therapized myself when I went into grief therapy when my mum died um, mm. of, what do you call it here, ALS? Every, we speak the same language, but it's okay. never the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, is we, we call it motor neurons disease in the UK. Okay, and um, and she, they were like, "We think you've done grief counselling before." I'm like, "I definitely haven't." <laughs> and they're like, "Yeah, but you, you've gone through some of the things." And I'm like, and then they explained, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I did do that to myself. Yep, I did that." too wow someone's had too much therapy like yeah. but yeah like it's uprooting psychological programming mm-hmm. of self-hate of hate of sisters brothers yeah. like categorically the bisecting of us yes you know is something and like extracting that sense of hope is supremely what it felt like Mm -hmm. growing up in the UK. And people would be like, yeah, but you come to America and there are problems here. I'm like, yeah, we we know there are problems here. (laughs) But the thing is that you talk to an American, they'll be like, sure. Yeah. Whereas we're profoundly in denial in the UK. I get you. And that's, there's nothing worse than, not even AA will accept someone that doesn't admit they have a problem. This is true. Yeah. The first step is accepting it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so I'm like, you can't even get into AA, guys. (laughs) Like... Like you talk, most Americans I talk to go, yeah, we well, you know we got issues here, yeah, mm-hmm. we got issues for <laughs> we got sure. Some issues, for sure. we may have some issues, for sure. and it's not the profoundly controversial thing to say. It was like people admit this to me as a Brit all the time. Like sometimes they'll even just apologize. They'll be like, "I'm sorry." How long have you been in the states? Uh, well, three years technically, okay. but one and a half of those was locked I, in a house. I get you. Uh, so one and a half. Do really. you, have, you know, I studied abroad in London. I studied at Regent's University. Oh yeah. How did you find that? <laughs> hey! <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you know what? You answered. <laughs> no, I, I had a good time, hey, but there, you there are, you know, there's some system, systemic microaggressions that also arose some, to the yeah. top. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah. There's like a whole bunch. Like yeah. it's, the whole thing is built on a system of, microaggressions yeah. and like silent backstabbing and voiding of your ability to do things that you need to be doing. Right. You know, so you'll never know who's fucking you. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, that's You're, not fun. And sometimes people will never know they're fucking you because that's it's the, the, the mind. programming is so it's the deep. Mind. The mind, the lie is so deep. Oh my God. And so they'll never know. Oh, I didn't even know I was ruining your life. Yeah, no idea. Mm-hmm. I thought yeah. that's just what you deserve. No, for real. You know? No, for real. Mm-hmm. You brought up your mother, if I may. Um, I was reading that she wasn't always supportive of music. No, she loved music. Okay. Like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. But again... Oh, of your music trajectory. Not me, no. Oh, But like... Okay. I. Okay, so back to the plus size dark skin girl thing. Mm-hmm. She was like, I don't want you to go out in these streets and do that. Right. Because I don't want people to comment on your skin tone. Try to, you know, tear you down. Yeah. Essentially. And, you know, there was a lot of that kind of tear down fear. But specifically because I was the darker one and like, you know, between us. and Yeah. And so it was very like... Like colorism fueled... I get you. ...fear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, like... But she didn't really know me. <laughs> mm. That I'd already decided when I was four, and I was completely un. You decided so young. That's I really knew. That's and amazing. Everything I've done is pretty much to the the sentence what I thought I would do when I was four. I explained it to my mother. <laughs> yeah. I was like, 
I'm probably going to want to just sing and write songs, but I'm probably going to have to join a few bands and a few things to figure out what I want to do. And then they'll all just piss me off gradually because they won't allow me to be myself. At four. And then I'll go and be myself. And that's what I'm going to do. Yes. That's my story. And that's exactly what Shout out to you for being aligned happened. with yourself. Hey, it would have been nicer to be able to skip that given that I knew it was coming. Huh. But no. Huh. Do, you, uh, do you date? Do I date? I'm trying. <laughs> what, are, what are your rules for dating? What are your rules for dating? Oh, wow. Wow. Do you know what? Yeah. So I went through a bit of a genre of what I would call hot and horrible. And people- Sounds like a reality show. It does. It does sound like a reality show. <laughs> Just loads of really smoking hot idiots. Yes. Just idiots. Hot and horrible. Troglodytes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just morons smoking hot morons well, what are the rules Yola? And so, <laughs> okay we're, we're just we'll table that uh-huh. that pilot for another time okay um, <laughs> um i again you know someone that really understands balance yeah. and equity in a connection someone who puts because I know there's like a real genre of people that like the uh, the subdom dynamic, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, if it, it if it doesn't involve leather, I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> like, what are you doing here? Why are you We're- doing here? I don't understand. I'm like, I'm really partnership, teamwork, yes, yes. that kind of the, equity. that energy, equity. you know, yep. equity. Mm-hmm. I'm so obsessed with equity with everything. Yeah, I'm so obsessed with making sure that my inner bigot doesn't, oh, absence of all bigotries, like a walking Afro punk sign. That's a rule? Yeah. Yeah. Like abs- all of them. Okay. Like I'm a boring old straighty, <laughs> but like it's like, if I see homophobia, Getting it in the neck, mate. What's a straight? <laughs> What's a straight? <laughs> um, I, I'm a straight person. Oh, okay, okay. But like over fifty percent <laughs> okay, of my friends okay. are queer of some description. Okay, yes. Like a very high percentage. Yes. And so, um, I just it, it's really important that all of the bigotries are at least you at least you police them. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yep. You know, I can't stand it. I can't it. I can't live with it. Yeah. If I see it, like even if we're getting on really great, you're gonna disappear at yeah, some point. Because that is who you are. I can't necessarily change that. If you're showing no. up as this grown ass person. That's on me. <laughs> <laughs> and you over here doing all this discrimination. I can't do that. I can't change that. You have to choose to change it yourself. Mm-hmm. And so like absence of bigotry, not being surface level. Yeah. Having some kind of conversation. Yeah. And do you know what really profoundly underrated quality? Kindness. It's so important. People, when people don't, they feel like they just think, oh, that's just being nice. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's actually having the wherewithal to consider someone else's point of view before they've told you, mm-hmm. before they've broken it down and going, this is what I need right now. Like actually empathize with a person. Yeah. That's it's kindness requires so many different kind of aspects of, you know, social skills. Yeah. (laughs) And some people think that honestly, if they go to the gym enough, they can completely forget their social skills. What does it take for you to reveal yourself? Oh, well. Especially in your artistry too. Oh, not a lot. (laughs) 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 Oh, like, you know, uh, not too much. Freedom. Yeah. That's what you show Com- up as. Freedom and comfort. Yeah. Like if I'm writing and someone's got an agenda in mm-hmm. the room that mm-hmm. isn't up just about the song and uh, are trying to meet like cerebrally and emotionally yeah. in the creating of the song. If someone's got some kind of chip in their shoulder or so, like I'm going to clam up like you wouldn't believe. Okay. I need to feel that we're that I'm free to create in whatever way yeah. that people aren't going, okay, this is my bit and that's your bit. Mm-hmm. Or they haven't got a preconception of what they think I should be doing. Yeah, Like I need to go in some, to somewhere and feel as though I could go in, in my pajamas. Yeah, And then the second I feel like I could walk in somewhere with my pajamas, even though I might've turned up with me, you know, my titties falling out. <laughs> so they kind of half are underneath this thing. Um, yeah. Like if I feel that comfortable, then 
the the quality of ideas is so markedly elevated. Mm, yep. So markedly elevated. Yep, yep, yep. And, you know, so you can get two completely different sessions out of me. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's really, and it's the same with company. Like when I'm hiring for a tour band or like team members, yeah. like we have to hang and I have to be able to feel real comfortable, comfortable. with you or you don't even Because we have to share job. space. We just have to share space in general. Yeah. So I need to be if comfortable. If we live yeah. on a bus with you, we better be able to share space, wow. space, you know. I want to bring up something that you mentioned off camera really quick. You mentioned that you're flowing and you're in this transitional space, right? Yes. Because you have been working nonstop for eight years. Yeah. How does this moment feel to you? And what are you excited to get back to? Well, after the, the break? gym. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really get on with my personal trainer as I do with anyone that I work with a lot because I can't stand people that I can't stand. Yeah. And so <laughs> yeah. I hang out with a handful of people for exactly that reason. But like, um, yeah, the gym um the studio mm-hmm. but like i need silence i need like real almost tumbleweed boredom to get to that point of being creative yeah. so this is like month 5 yeah. of 6 months like not really doing any kind of touring did like a show or two and yeah. like a couple of award shows Do you take any trips do you know outside what? of work you know what i'm saying like i say- was tempted i'm i've been planning to take two trips mm-hmm. one to the birthplace of my mother, mm. um, Barbados, mm. and the other to the birthplace of my father, who I didn't grow up with, mm. Ghana. Okay. And then I realized I've been traveling for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> so, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was like, hold on. Do you know what? Maybe I should just like take small trips and just visit friends yeah. who you love, but you never see. Mm-hmm. And... And so, yeah, like that's what I've been doing. I, my holiday has been people. It's been the people that I love and that like building up, especially when like, you know, you're not a trust fund kid. Yeah. It takes a real long time. And so now <laughs> I'm kind of at a place where I can afford to take time off. Yep. Like, you know, it's just really important to build the next chapter, which is, less arduous I you know you. yeah and so yeah i'm looking forward to that yeah <laughs> of the the more sustainable version of my touring life um and yeah maybe i'll take a break like a real holiday at some point yeah but, you know it's been a lot of traveling and I, it dawned on me that that might not be relaxing it wears on you for yeah. sure if every album has a mission if every album has a mission who was your latest project for and what do you want this next one to be for? Okay, so my latest project was, um, uh, it was almost like a cue card to myself. <laughs> okay. It was like a series of cue cards, 12 cue cards of like, so this is where you were, this is where you are. Mm-hmm. But w- there's nothing that we do that's static, right? Right. We don't just like become someone else and then stay that person. We're always ever evolving. And we're not always evolving for the better. Sometimes we evolve for the worse. It's true. Like, I don't know, like societally, that what look what's going on at the moment with like just <laughs> anyone's rights for anything. Yeah. Like we 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 ebb and flow. And so it's a continual reminder to be aware of the areas where you're being a doormat, to dance away in tears by drawing some boundaries, <laughs> <laughs> realizing what you've outgrown. And like every song has a moment of like. Um, Starlight is don't forget to have a sexy time. Yeah. Just because it, they may be the one, they may not, but always make sure that there's like a really profound, good, yeah. positive connection wherever that thing leads. Because you shouldn't just be like, they're all nightmares and I finally find the one, which is like the Hollywood version of like <laughs> dating, yes, you know? Yes, yes. I live And here. so don't forget to have your sexy times, you know, is a definite part of it. Just like love on yourself in your process. You know, there's, you know, a song um, that's about society is going to perpetually get worse. And like you might be able to contribute positively to that, but also you have it in a pessimist that's like, ah. It's always trying to talk that's you. called Diamond Studded Shoes and it's kind of like, it was based on a long time ago and it only gets truer and it's kind of disturbing. <laughs> but 
every time I sing it, I'm like, oh crap, this got truer today. Yep. Oh crap. Not like, you manifesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, I'm not writing any more like pessimistic songs. Yes. But by the time I get to the end of the record, um, the song Stand For Myself is there. Yeah. And it speaks back to the first song, which is Barely Alive. Yeah. Going, I get why you were like a bit of a chicken, a bit of a doormat. But I've taken some steps and it's really fucking lit over here. We all grow. So That's you should amazing. probably just like, just don't be afraid. And every time you have to go through this cycle again of, you know, self-discovery, you know, don't be afraid to do it because every time you get to that 12th record, 12th record on the album, you're always happier. You're oh, always wow. happier. Yeah. And so that's kind of what that the cycle of the record is. Yeah. And you look below the surface of the lyrics, like, you know, you're like, oh yeah, that can mean that. Oh yeah, that does mean that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, and every song has that about it in some way. Wow. You're always so present, which I think is really, you know, groundbreaking. Most people don't have that as all, you know, we say it every day, like, I want to be present, you know, those things. But you seem to have moved throughout it. your entire life being true to that. So that's really cool. I'm trying, but th- there's a there's a... It's a downside. Yeah. I realized this. Like, I, you're you're less on social media, <laughs> yeah, because you're actually experiencing. Yeah, it's like a you got to find the balance. I I will say I don't think I found the balance. Uh, yet. Uh, yeah, but like it's a that one. is that is that is the tough thing. Being present does make you better at your job. Though. Yeah, wow, it does make you better at your job. Like I know I can go and do my job and slay mm. any situation. Period. With with absolutely no question mm-hmm. because I'm being present, because I'm interacting with the emotion at the time and with the people at the time. Yeah. Like, I'm never, there's no situation you can put me in that I'm remotely intimidated. It doesn't exist. I know, that's right. Yeah. Confident. But the, the downside is that, you know, you might get a few less posts from me. Uh-huh. Swings and roundabouts, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. We know where to find you. <laughs> Right there on the streaming service. Go listen to me and tell them back. That's uh, that part. <laughs> can we play a game? Can you play a game? Yeah, yeah, please. please okay, please. it's just going to be really quick. Hey, I'm open. This Let's or go. that. I want to get to know you a little bit better. I'm going to give you a sna- <laughs> like, you know, this, you know, you know what I'm saying. Okay, so yeah. ready? This or that? Holiday. So vacation or staycation? Holiday or? Oh, it really depends when. Uh-huh. Stay- at the moment, staycation. Okay, okay. Passenger or driver? Oh, passenger. <laughs> Can you drive? I am I used to be a biker. Oh. I rode a cruiser motorcycle. Oh, wow. Like oh, this. wow. And My then mom I saw wants to be a biker. how Americans drive. Scary. You guys are scary. Like, yeah. I love you and I love being here. <laughs> but... Get me off the road. <laughs> no. Just, guys, I don't know where you are. Which one are you? Right no. Right there. No. N- whatever you're doing... Try harder, okay? <laughs> Art museum. Love you. Art museum. Let you buy, as Terry would say. <laughs> Art, oh God. Art museum or history museum? Art museum. Ooh, date night or girls night? Ooh, date night. Cookies or cake? Cake all day. For real? I'm a cake bitch. Really? Yeah. I'm cookie. Biscuit, oh, yeah. biscuit. You know, I love a good cookie. Oh, yeah. Rich and famous or rich and unknown? Ooh, Mm. Mm, that's really hard (laughs) like i have with my job i have to be famous right right but i rich and unknown is pretty fly yeah pretty fly yeah pineapple pizza or candy corn oh i don't have either because it all sounds like things that are going to me bring me out in hives Mm -hmm. uh oh yeah that or in the bathroom married or single uh Married. Okay. Elvis or Adele? Oh, God. Adele. Yeah. Yeah. Oprah Come or Beyonce? Song, girl. Oprah or Beyonce? Uh, ooh. Oh, God. Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love Beyonce more yes. than love, But Oprah, come uh, on. Coffee or tea? Tea all day. Yes. What's your favorite kind of tea? Just I love oh well I love hibiscus tea. Okay. I love green tea. Okay. And but English breakfast. I love it. English milk breakfast. and two. Oh yeah. That's my thing. <sighs> Reality shows or documentaries? Documentaries. Red or white wine? Uh oh, it depends. I'm a I I'm a I'm a wine I'm a I love wine. Yes. 
And so Same. it depends what I'm eating. It depends what you're it eating. It really does what I'm eating. I'm not going to have like red wine what with steak? shellfish. What? Oh, yeah. That'd be horrific. That's imagine, horrible, right? Yeah, imagine <laughs> having scallops <laughs> and red wine. That's odd. No. <laughs> That's odd. Day or night? Oh, I'm a night owl. Really? But I have to... So, I'm I'm making myself a day person. Yeah. But my body is a night body. Lastly, lip gloss or lipstick? Do you know what? I've been wearing a lot of gloss recently. I'm yeah. really loving it. Yeah. I love yeah. that for you. Thanks, babe. You're going on tour this year again. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're little, all, but less. <laughs> but less. Any other, less. Any, like, what else do the people need to know? How do we keep up with you? All the things. Um. So, like, if you just go to iamyella.com, most of my things are on there. Yeah. But I'm, like, always on Instagram. So, mm -hmm. you just find me on, like, I am Yola official. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to be like, where's Yola? I'm there. <laughs> That's where I am. That's where you okay? are. Okay. So just go there. I'll be there. Follow me. That's a, probably a very good idea. Yeah. Because uh, that that place gets everything of me first. Exactly. Yeah. So and yeah. we'll link it. We'll link it. We'll link it. All the things. Thank yeah. you for being here. It's Thank really you magical. So much. We're matching. We're aligned. We got a drink. Cheers to you. I know, right? Cheers to you. We didn't even put in a call for this whole wardrobe thing. <laughs> no, we didn't. No. I'm not joking. This is just... No. Uh, our menzies are synced. <laughs> there you go. That's right. I know. That's right. We're dancing away in laughs today. Mm -hmm. Love you so much. Thank you for being here. Hey friends, thanks so much for tapping into this episode. Make sure you subscribe, like, and follow for more right here on YouTube and wherever you stream your podcast. Oh, and visit archiej.com and follow me on social media at Archie Speaks. okay? <laughs> and don't miss our weekly conversations right here on the Archie Podcast. Get into it.